Hello. Welcome to Megger's technical support video series, Frequently Asked Questions. Today we will discuss how to run a test using the Torkoal 900 series graphic user interface. Let's get started. Once you're done with all your connections and the test setup is ready, on the Torkoal graphic user interface you will see this. You can start off by switching to the cells tab to verify all your BVM connections you'll be able to see a bar chart showing you the individual cell voltage measurements on, on, on all the cells. Make sure that all the cells are visible here. You can verify the number of cells over here as well as the number of BVMs over here. The number of BVMs is obviously one more uh, than the total number of cells on the string. And you want to make sure that the bar graphs are the same height. So you won't typically see this when you do a real-time test uh, when you do a real test, you will see that the bars are all at the same height, pretty much the same height at least. And then what you will do is you will switch over to the battery tab, enter all the information on the uh, battery string over here, go to the results tab. The results tab uh, shows you a summary of the test data at the end of the test. So you'll see that most of the fields uh, under this tab are grayed out. Uh, they populate automatically at the end of the test, but the ones that are editable, you can fill in information in those fields. So let me just put in some values here. Once you've entered information in, under the battery tab and the results tab, you can switch over to the test settings tab and make changes over here. You can select the test method. There are all these different options. Typically you would do the constant current test. So let's stick with that for this video. You would enter the test current over here. One of the most important steps is to uh, make sure that you enter the temperature correction factor. The temperature correction factor can be set by accessing this icon. If this icon is grayed out, then that means that the temperature compensation is disabled. It can be enabled by accessing the configuration screen over here. To set the temperature correction factor, you would click on this and uh, the window that comes up shows you the two options for capacity calculation. Uh, rate adjustment method, the time adjust method. In this case, the time adjusted method is selected and you can see that the IEEE uh, standards are selected. If I click on the drop down, I can see the additional options. For here in the States, you would select the IEEE option uh, if you are testing a lead acid battery because these standards are meant for maintenance and testing on uh, lead acid batteries. 450 is for flooded lead acid, 1188 is for sealed lead acid. The temperature uh, of 27 Celsius is selected and you can see that the correction factor populates over here based on the values that are provided in the standards. Click on the check mark to exit the window. Then you will need to enter the warning and the stop limits. Warning limits cause the instrument to put out a warning if the limit is exceeded and stop limits cause the instrument to stop the test if the limits are exceeded. The limits can be set be on the basis of four parameters, the overall battery voltage, the capacity, uh, the time, and uh, BVM, which is the individual cell voltage. Um, so the fourth parameter would, uh, you can set limits based on BVMs only if you're using BVMs as accessories. A typical way to go about it would be to set a warning limit on the individual cell voltage. And again, this, this is only possible if you're using BVMs. So let me just enable it. You can see that the value is 1.4 volts here. That means that the instrument will give me a warning if um, the voltage drops below 1.4 volts on any of those cells on the string. I can also set a stop limit on the overall battery voltage. So when I enable this, uh, what this means is that the instrument will stop the test when the uh, battery voltage drops down to uh, 42 volts. Now you would enter whatever the end voltage is 
uh, for the battery strain that you're testing over here. So once you have made all the, uh, once you have done all the settings in this tab, you will switch back over to the cells tab. And then uh, at this point, you will turn off your charger. So up until this point, the charger is supposed to be turned on and the battery is supposed to be in the float condition. When we turn off the charger, uh, what what it does is the, the instrument uh, was measuring the float voltage up until this point and as soon as you turn off the charger the uh, voltage changes by, by a little bit and the instrument senses that and it measures the open voltage. So then what you can do is switch back over to the test settings tab and start the test by clicking on the play button. When you do that, you see a real-time graph of the overall battery voltage. Here you can see the live test parameters. Here you can see the scale. If you want to change the scaling, you can do so by clicking on the magnifying glass here. That brings up the scaling options. What you can see here is that it's set to auto scale and you can also see an offset here. The offset is basically the starting point for the y-axis on the graph. I can manually change the scale by disabling the auto scale and then playing with the plus minus keys. You can see that the offset has now changed to minus 40 and the scale has changed to 20 volts per division on the graph. Let me just Take it back to its original value, enable the auto scale, and then click on the check mark to exit it. <coughs> now, this graph not only can show you the overall battery voltage, but you can also see some additional parameters, and that's what these colors correspond to. To be able to see the additional parameters, you can click over here. You see options for different parameters like the test current, the measured capacity, uh, power, resistance. Let me just enable the graph for the amp hours, for the capacity. You can see that a checkbox appears here. Now here what, what it's asking you is which uh, scale do you want to see? Do you want to see the scale for the voltage on the graph or do you want to see the scale for the capacity? So I'm just going to leave it on scale, but if I wanted to see the scale for the measured capacity, I could have just clicked on this and it would show me the scale uh, for the capacity uh, over here. Let me just switch back to the voltage because that's what we want to see and click on the check mark. I can see the measured capacity uh, appears on the graph. Let's go over to the cells tab and see what inf information it provides. Now here you see the starting values as well as the, uh, the live values. On the right here, it kind of gives you a summary of the values. Um, what it gives you is three types of parameters, the live voltage values, the float voltage values, and the start voltage values. So float values, as I said earlier, are the values which were measured when the charger was still on, and the start values were measured at the moment the test was started. Live values are current values. So you can see that for each of these, uh, types there is a minimum there's a maximum and SEL stands for selected so minimum is the minimum of all those four 24 cells maximum is the maximum of all those 24 cells and selected uh, is based on where this pointer is and you can move this point to different bars by clicking on uh, those bars and basically you see uh, the information for the cell uh, which corresponds to this bar on the screen. The standards allow you to pause the test uh, once during the entire duration of the test. Uh, the reason to do that would be to bypass bad cells. When you're doing this discharge test, different cells discharge at different rates based on their condition. The bad cells, uh, the bad cells would discharge faster, their voltages would drop sooner. Uh, if you see them approaching polarity reversal, uh, then what you can do is 
uh, and and the the warning limit helps you out with that when when the cell voltage drop too low the instrument gives you a warning so you can uh, based based on that based on the voltages that you see you can decide uh, at what point uh, during the test to to bypass those cells uh, that's entirely your call this has to be done wisely because uh, you only get one chance uh, to pause the test so the way to pause the test is to click on the pause button here and as soon as you hit the pause button the pause timer starts uh, there as I said there, there's a maximum limit on the duration uh, and that is six minutes so you want to make sure that you bypass all the bad cells and resume the test before uh, the clock hits six minutes over here to resume the test once you're done uh, with bypassing the bad cells, you will click on the play button. When you resume the test right now, I'm running a simulation, so I don't really uh, see anything on the graph here. But when you're running a test on an actual battery, uh, if you pause the test and resume uh, the test, and look look at the graph, you will see a little bit of a blip on the on the graph and that's because when you stop the test the cells start to recover a little bit and that causes that little disturbance on the graph um, and that can skew your results and that's why there is a there's a limit on the duration for, for pausing the test if you do bypass some bad cells what you want to do is go over to the settings tab and change the end voltage accordingly. So the end voltage would be recalculated by subtracting the end voltage for the number of cells that you have bypassed. So let's say the end voltage is 1.75 volts per cell and you bypassed two cells. So you would change the end voltage to 1.75 times uh, two, which would be 3.5 volts. So you'd subtract 3.5 from 42 volts and set the new number uh, as the new um, stop limit for the test. On the BVMs, when you bypass a cell, uh, the two BVMs connected across the bypassed cells would be shorted, and so you would see the graph uh, disappear, the bar for that particular cell disappear over here, and it would basically be zero from, from that point on. Now, if you have set a stop limit, uh, and when the stop limit is exceeded, the test set will, will, would automatically stop the test. Uh, since I'm running a simulation here, I'm going to manually stop the test. And the way to do that is to click on the pause button. And then the when you click on the pause button, it changes to a stop sign. And then you can click on the stop uh, to, to stop the test. It gives you the standard options where it asks you to save and abort uh, or save and measure recovery. So if you want to measure uh, the cell voltages while the cells recover you can click on the second option or if you want to resume the test you can just click on continue the test I'm going to click on save and abort to end the test when I click on that the results tab opens up and I can see a summary of the test data here everything is grayed out uh, <clears throat> so here since I ran a simulation these are just random values which are showing up uh, but when you run a, a real test you would be able to see uh, proper data over here. This concludes the video on how to run a test using the Torca 900 series graphic user interface. Visit the Mega YouTube channel for more videos including technical webinars, product overviews and other how-to presentations similar to this one. Contact us for questions or more information about this topic or for any support you may need for your electrical testing.